What's going on internet? IG back again today and today's video is going to be a little bit different. It's basically going to be a live com of me uh, tweaking and installing or, or rather tweaking after installing a brand new uh, Fedora 29 distribution on a virtual machine. The reason why I'm doing this is because I think it's a really good opportunity to talk about some of the tweaks that I do for most systems, starting off with setting a new host name. Uh, so again, it's host name control, set host name and I change the host name to whatever I want. This is more specific to Fedora because they just default to a pretty lame host name by default. And, uh, and basically throughout this video, um, I'm just gonna be talking over the top, talking over some of the things that I do uh, and, uh, and some of the reasons why. And hopefully uh, this will maybe show a few twe tweaks that uh, you don't already do yourself. And, uh, and hopefully we'll all learn something. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm removing the title bar Chrome from Firefox, just to shrink down the amount of pixels that Firefox uses by default. You'll notice that the title, the window controls are actually integrated into the window now, instead of them being on a separate uh, line of pixels. Uh, next, what I'm gonna do is uh, install the RPM Fusion repositories, both free and non-free. Again, you go to the website, click on configuration, copy paste a DNF command that'll add both the free and non-free repositories to your Fedora 29 system. And this will allow you to install a lot more software uh, from the software manager in the very near future, which we will get to shortly. So as you can see, I'm running DNF update after that, and that's gonna refresh all the repositories and make sure that all the software that's showing up in the software store is all up to date with what is on the servers. Um, Again, uh, I, I guess I'm assuming a certain level of proficiency with Linux at this point, but um, if at any point you're sort of lost as to what's going on or things are moving too quickly, then uh, take the time just to pause the video and um, check out what's on the screen. You'll also notice I'm using a lower resolution than I usually do, and this is just so that it's easy to read what's going on. Uh, now I'm bringing up the fonts here just to demonstrate the fact that um, Fedora 29 was actually, I think, the first release that they were able to include much better font rendering engine uh, because Microsoft is now uh, open sourced and uh, and uh, put a lot of its patents into an open source library. Uh, they are now able to include much better font rendering uh, in Fedora by default, whereas before you had to do a bunch of tweaking. The other tweak that I do on a lot of systems is calibrate the monitors. So if there's a particular color profile that suits the monitor of the hardware that I'm on, then I'm going to jump into settings here under display and color to change that uh, color profile so the colors are more accurate to the hardware that I'm on. Uh, you can see in the background I've got the uh, the software repositories displayed so you can see which ones are enabled and which ones are disabled. I'm going to enable Chrome just as an example. It's a pretty one, simple one-click solution um, and as you can see it's uh, Basically, it's just RPM Fusion and Chrome at this stage. Um, now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, in this, uh, in the footage, I'm going to enable Flatpak support, um, which is very, very important, I think, if you're going to run a Linux distribution in 2018. And, uh, and Flatpak is the standard that uh, Linux Mint and Fedora and a few other big name distributions have leaned into. The alternative to that being, of course, Snap uh, from the guys at Canonical and a few distributions and projects are leaning into that as well. Um, so I'm gonna do that in a bit, but for right now, I'm going to enable the GNOME extensions uh, Firefox add-on. So basically you just, again, Google that, um, install the add-on. What this allows you to do is it allows you to browse the GNOME Shell extensions website and just install uh, GNOME Shell extensions. So little pieces of software that tweak the way GNOME Shell works uh, and it allows you to install them straight from the website. It's very simple, very one-click solution. Okay, so back to flat packs. Uh, the FlatHub repository is the largest uh, repository of flat packs out there. You download a repository file, simply install, give it your root password and away you go. Uh, once you have quit the software center and restarted it, or even restart your computer, you should then be able to uh, install flat packs to your heart's content. Uh, now, the other thing that I'm doing here is you'll notice the add-ons uh, section of the software manager. And from here, you can install uh, hardware drivers, fonts, codecs, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna install the multimedia codecs. Again, these are coming from the RPM Fusion repositories. So you wanna make sure that you've got those enabled and uh, and depending on which distribution you are tweaking, um, they're, sometimes they're included, sometimes you have to add an extra repository. Because Fedora likes to keep an open source GPL license on all the software 
software that it ships with to avoid licensing issues, um, it will uh, it relegates those to an external repository that you add. Hence why we did that first up. Okay, so as you can see now, by now, the, uh, the Flatpak uh, apps are showing up in the GNOME Software Center. And, uh, and so you can install um, sandboxed uh, apps to a degree uh, here through the Software Center, which I think is amazing. And they're automatically gonna update as well, which is also amazing. So a lot of third-party um, apps are now supported through Flatpak cause, just because it's so much easier for developers to package applications for Linux in this way. Okay, so moving on from that, we're going to uh, disable some of the search and indexing that's going on. GNOME, uh, GNOME by default is pretty heavy, and one of the big culprits for that is searching and indexing. I don't actually need a lot of the search features um, because I, I've got a fairly well categorized file structure system and I know where the stuff is that I want. Um, so apart from apps, I basically turn everything off, and this just allows uh, the, tracking so uh, the tracking and indexing software of GNOME to not take up as many resources. And uh, it's actually very tempting to turn it off altogether and just get a good keyboard launcher like Albert. Uh, and something like that, very similar to Mac OS's Spotlight. Um, and that way you're not running, um, or you shouldn't run any uh, tracking or indexing software in the background. GNOME Tweaks tool. The GNOME Tweaks tool is very important to install. So I jump into the software center here and I install that. That's gonna allow me to tinker with and adjust the, the basic user interface uh, with all of these extensions. So you can now see I'm at extensions.gnome.org. And now I'm just filing through the extensions that I know and love and simply hitting the on switch. Now you can see that first one threw up an error, uh, incompatible with the version of GNOME Shell. Sometimes they take a little while to get updated. But you see, I've got the weather one that I'm loading up, which just it does exactly what it says. Uh, and I'm also going to add, uh, I think I'm gonna add an alternative menu and I'm gonna add uh, dash to dock, which basically enables uh, the favorites list on the left-hand side of the screen in the activities view uh, to permanently uh, remain visible uh, when you don't have a window covering it. So basically it just turns the uh, favorites dash into a dock on the side of your screen or on the bottom, depending. Um, I've also enabled the uh, tray icons extension. This is uh, mostly for just covering my butt in terms of third party apps that use a system tray icon still. Um, apps like Skype and, and stuff like that usually use a system tray icon still. Um, and again, I, I actually didn't have a chance to test out whether or not it was uh, functional and working, but uh, because I know that top icons used to be uh, the one that you would install, but I don't know if that's around still or whether it's active. It's been a while. So tray icons is what I settled with there. Um, again, these GNOME shell extensions aren't specific to Fedora either. Um, they're specific to any desktop, uh, any distribution of Linux that runs the GNOME desktop. You can jump in and install these from the Firefox browser once you have the GNOME shell uh, extension add-on. Uh, so again, I'm just looking through some menus here to see uh, what uh, see what I want to use. The GNO menu is uh, is good, but it's it's a little bit too um, big. It's a little bit too large and not quite as minimal as what I'd like. So I end up settling for this simple applications menu, um, which does what it says. Again, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, also, I, you've probably picked this up by now, and I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but this video definitely is sped up. So it's running at about uh, 1.5 times as opposed to normal. So that's why things are kind of moving as quick as they are. Um, the, other, the other extension that I've heard a lot about is the Activities Configurator. And again, this just gives you a lot of really granular control over, um, over how the Activities view is laid out, which is kind of the overlay view of GNOME Shell. It's a very different desktop paradigm. Uh, to what we're used to. Oh, and TLP switcher. TLP switcher is if you're running a laptop and you wanna get better battery life out of your system, TLP and PowerTop are two tools that you can use to try and do that. However, I would uh, recommend that you kind of test TLP a little bit first because it can be very aggressive and lead to some performance issues with your distribution. So PowerTop is recommended, TLP use with caution. Um, and now, as you can see, I'm in GNOME Tweak tool, and I am uh, just fiddling around with the extensions that I've added. Again, that's the Activities Configurator, and you can see the level of granular detail that you've got there in terms of what you can change. Um, and the rest of the, these extensions, you can see the ones that are enabled or the ones that are disabled. 
And uh, and now it's time, now that I've got GNOME Tweak Tool installed, now it's time to install my uh, one of my favorite themes. Wonderful thing about Linux and especially GTK is that you can theme it immensely. Uh, and flat remix themes is one of the, in my opinion anyway, one of my favorite themes. Um, so again, this very much applies to your own personal tastes. But for me, it was a matter of adding a uh, adding a, uh, a a GPG key, basically an authentication key, to show that the software that I'm, or the place that I'm getting this software from, is relatively legit, um, and then adding a uh, a copr repository. I'm not exactly sure how you meant to say that. It's kind of like a PPA for Fedora, um, and after you've added that repository for that software, then it's a matter of just running the DNF install commands for. Uh, for each particular package that contains what you want, whether it's the GNOME shell theme or the icon theme or the GTK theme. Now, the funny thing was I didn't actually run the command for the GTK theme at this point. Um, I don't know, I just forgot to do it. And so I go off and start doing some other things and I come back and do the GTK theme later when I realize that it's not showing up in, uh, in GNOME extensions. Uh, so that's really all there is to know about that. As you can see, I've installed the GNOME theme I've installed the icon theme, which is what's happening right now. Um, and then I had to come back and do the GTK theme a little bit later so that it would all look nice and pretty. Um, the other thing that, uh, that I find really helpful is uh, to make sure that you install um, Microsoft fonts. Again, it's a licensing issue that, uh, that Fedora can't ship these by default. And, uh, and some distributions make this easier than others. And so in just a minute, after I've finished adjusting where uh, the weather widget is pulling from, uh, I, will, um, I will go out and install the Microsoft fonts using, uh, basically just using a script that goes out and downloads the individual fonts. Um, so yeah, after I've adjusted the weather, as you can see, the weather looks uh, much more accurate now to where I am. And uh, so now I'll pull up the instructions on, on the Microsoft core fonts. So um, again, it's a terminal command that you copy paste from this particular website. Um, as long as you have the uh, dependencies that this package will need installed, which you can see um, under the how to install, I'm highlighting them now and uh, pasting them into the terminal root password and it will install those uh, extra tools basically to th that will make this script work the way that it needs to. Uh, then once I've done that, I can uh, grab the uh, RPM and extract it, install it, and the script will uh, run that uh, to install the fonts. Now, in order to um, in order to do this at a system level, you need to give it the root password. That means that all the users on this particular system will be able to access these fonts, as opposed to just my user. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the Microsoft fonts, and usually it helps in terms of showing up uh, better fonts on the internet because a lot of it, uh, a lot of websites rely on those Microsoft fonts. Next thing I do is uh, install TimeShift. At this point, I'm usually getting a bit happier with how the system is doing and what I've got running on it, so it's a good time to start thinking about backing up. And uh, TimeShift, I, I really like what that project is doing, and uh, so I have been sort of experimenting with that a bit more in terms of running that as my main backup solution. So uh, you download the the TimeShift uh, binary from their website, or if you're on an Ubuntu-based distribution, it's a it's a deb, uh, whereas here on Fedora, it's a .run file. Uh, again, root password, it'll install that, and then you can run TimeShift uh, from the applications menu. Um, basically what TimeShift will do is take a snapshot of everything that's happening on your system and then uh, add files to that or add the changes rather to the backups so that the backups don't get extremely large, um, but obviously it will back up uh, whatever you tell it to and it will only exclude um, it'll only exclude things like your downloads folder and that sort of stuff by default. Um, and, uh, and if you have set up your system with a BTRFS file system, that snapshotting becomes a lot more technologically advanced, but by default it just goes to rsync and you could plug in an external drive and tell that to back up every so often. I'm not going to do it with this virtual machine because there's just not enough space, but, uh, but that's how you do that and that's usually at this point in the process when I will, uh, when I will do that. Uh, so we jump back to the tweaks tool to start customizing a few more of the extensions. And, uh, and I think it's at this point that I, uh, that I realize or that I start uh, playing around with dash to dock a little bit more, um, changing the font, uh, sorry, changing the icon size, changing the, um, 
the spacing and that kind of thing. Um, but what I'm beginning to realize is that there's too many pixels being taken up by all of this stuff as it is. And uh, so while I'm fiddling around with that, I'm actually toying with the idea of doing dash to panel instead as uh, dash to panel is uh, a little more conservative in terms of uh, the way that it works and um, a more traditional desktop paradigm. Um, and uh, so I think that's what I ended up switching to uh, before this video is done. As you can see, I'm just starting to switch over to the theme that I downloaded earlier. And, uh, and as you can see, this is where I realize, huh, I don't have the GTK theme. I've switched the GNOME shell theme and I've just switched to the icon theme that I like. And I've realized that there is no GTK theme, which arguably makes the most difference. So I believe I jump back to the website and uh, copy paste that last command that I missed to install the GTK webs uh, to install the GTK theme and then after that I'm pretty sure I switch over again the process of installing themes here is going to be different depending on um, what you like oftentimes you'll find a lot of themes in the RPM fusion repositories you'll even find some themes uh, in the actual Fedora repositories it all depends on uh, the contributors and whether or not they have submitted the packages to the distribution so I've uh, installed that last package now and uh, and I go back to the tweak tool and switch the theme over to the darker theme, I'm pretty sure. And as you can see, that actually makes quite a bit of difference um, compared to the default ad waiter theme. Uh, the good news is, is that GNOME um, as, a, as a project is actually due for an icon refresh and uh, somebody's working very hard on drafting a new set of icons for GNOME, which I think is very cool. And, uh, and now I'm deciding to switch over to dash to panel, which, uh, which basically amalgamates all of the stuff that's going on in GNOME Shell into one panel. Down the bottom, very similar to uh, Windows 10, Linux Mint, uh, a much more traditional um, desktop paradigm. So you can see I've turned dash to dock off so that we don't have too many icons going on. And, uh, and now I'm also adding the window controls back. So you'll notice the top right corner of the window now has uh, close, minimize, and maximize. Um, and uh, that's basically, again, for a more traditional desktop paradigm. You can kind of see already that GNOME is looking pretty significantly different to what it did when we first started this video. Um, and again, you can make it look a lot more different to this uh, the further you want to go with it. And uh, so as you can see, now I'm just changing, fiddling with the size of the panel. Um, and I hope what this is doing is giving you a bit of an indication of how much control you have over the, uh, over the GNOME environment, that just because it runs GNOME and it kind of seems a bit locked off to begin with, doesn't mean it isn't actually very malleable to, uh, to what you're used to and what you like to use. Um, so after, uh, so we've got the theming taken care of. We've got uh, we've got our app situation pretty much sorted. Um, honestly, I think at this point we're kind of uh, we're kind of wrapping up all of the tweaks that I would do on a new system. Um, and I, I guess I want to take this opportunity just to thank you all for uh, for watching over the last uh, couple months or so. We've definitely grown a significant amount uh, in the last month, especially. So if you're new to the channel, welcome, glad to have you. Um, and uh, definitely um, follow me on Twitter as I'm probably most active and vocal on there. But thank you so much for watching uh, this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and you can find some areas that you can uh, maybe feed into the next time you're loading up your own distribution. But, uh, but now here we are with a fully customized Fedora 29 installation, uh, ready with flat packs, ready to install. We can go out and grab all of our favorite apps and services that we like to use. I'm gonna start customizing what, uh, what software is on that bottom panel there pinned by default. And uh, we've got a system all to ourselves. Again, thanks for watching. Let me know what's, what are your favorite tweaks in the comments section below, and I'll catch you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.